Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back, it's been a long time, it's been about 16, 18 months, something like that, a long time since I did a playthrough on the channel, it is good to be back and to celebrate being back, yes, I'm going to be playing some old shit. Yes, we're playing Arkham Horror 2nd Edition. This will be my 13th playthrough of Arkham Horror. And we will be staying with Wolfpack 48 scenarios. So he does thematic scenarios. Now, because I haven't done any sort of um, board gaming for a long, long while, because I was doing shift work, um, I thought, well, you know, I better ease myself back into it. So this particular scenario only uses the core board. So we're only in Arkham. We don't have any expansion boards. Because of that, that means that uh, we're playing with four investigators. So that'll mean that our open gate limit is seven. Our outskirts limit is four. Our monster limit is also going to be seven. And uh, the amount of monsters that come out should a gate appear is just going to be one. Okay, so uh, let's get into what exactly the scenario is. This should pop up on the screen now, so you can have a quick read of it. Uh, I'm going to go through it. Regarding um, putting things on screen, I'm only going to do it for things like the scenario... Um, I'll do it for Rantagoth himself and the Herald and a few other bits and pieces but I won't be doing it for every single card, it's just too much. So uh, the main things with a lot of text on I will actually put up like I've just put the scenario up but things like individual cards I won't. I'll just read out the individual small cards when I get them and uh, I'll just place them in front of the camera for a few seconds. You can pause the video if you want to read them yourself. It's just going to save me a lot of time. So uh, the scenario, just uh, don't, you've probably started reading it already, but uh, it requires Arkham Horror, The Curse of the Dark Pharaoh, The Black Goat of the Woods and Miskatonic Horror. And I've mixed all those in. So that's cool. And uh, basically what's happened is a group of cultists, they've realised that um, the Arkham Museum has a, an Egyptian exhibit and they're trying to steal some of those exhibits because what they want to do is uh, they want to do their nefarious culty things. But what they don't know is the exhibits are cursed because the Dark Pharaoh doesn't want his stuff stealing. And... Uh, so that's where the Herald comes in. And the Dark Pharaoh is obviously going to curse these cultists who are stealing his artefacts. Because he's a bit of a boy, he decides to have a bit of fun with them. And what he's going to do is he's also going to call forth Rantagoth in order for Rantagoth to actually go round and actually murder everyone and everything so uh, the little do the cultists know what they have um, what they have set in motion in order to divert attention from what they're doing they're actually trying to get everybody into a cult and uh, basically hope to get away with it but that's not gonna that's not gonna happen the dark pharaoh the avatar of Niall Arthotep he's gonna track you down anyway but they're trying to sort of get away with it. Uh, there are two, basically two cults in play. There's going to be the Silver Twilight Lodge, run by Carl Sanford, and also the Cult of the Thousand. So we've got the Curse of the Dark Pharaoh, and we're sort of bringing in the Black Goat of the Woods as well. That's what the Cult of the Thousand's about. So uh, while they're trying to steal these exhibits... We're going to try and stop them. We're also going to try and stop the Dark Pharaoh from bringing forth Ran to Goth. As part of this, we've got two investigators that we're going to have to um, have on our team as part of the scenario. One of those is Hank Sampson, the farmhand, and the other one is Jenny Barnes, the dilettante. And uh, they're in our team. We start off with those. We've also got a 
another couple of investigators that we've picked out of a specific pool. We'll go through the investigators later. First of all, we're going to go through the scenario, then we'll go through the Ancient One and the Herald, and I'll say a few things about um, what cards and things that uh, are going to be included and then we will move on to the investigators so that's the basic background to the scenario what does it involve well obviously the ancient one's going to be Rantagoth and the herald is going to be the dark pharaoh you can see them there they're both down there and uh, location decks what we're going to do is uh, no first of all mythos decks uh, we're going to have Arkham Horror, we've included Miskatonic Horror, and that's going to make up 18 cards of our 25 card Mythos deck. The way I've done it is rather than use the core Arkham Mythos and the Miskatonic Arkham Mythos and shuffle them all together, I shuffled the Arkham Mythos, took 12 cards out of that, I shuffled the Miskatonic Mythos, and took six cards out of that and then shuffled them together. So just wanted to make sure that we had a few Miskatonic cards in there. So uh, roughly a third of them are going to be Miskatonic ones. Out of the other um, cards that we need, we need another seven. The Black Goat of the Woods is um, contributing three cards. And the Curse of the Dark Pharaoh is contributing four cards. Those have all been picked out and they're there. That's all been shuffled. Don't know what's in there. And I don't know what comes where. That's all been shuffled. Next to it is the gate deck. Um, with the gate deck, what I've done there is, as per the scenario, I've used only the Arkham Horror, Black Goat of the Woods and Curse of the Dark Pharaoh gate cards. Um, I've shuffled all those together. They are all there. What we will do is when we pull gate cards, say we're pulling a gate card, I don't know, for the Plateau of Leng or something, we pull the card and uh, we pull a correct colour and we don't have a Plateau of Leng encounter. I will continue pulling till we get another card that matches the colours. And uh, if that doesn't have a Plateau of Leng encounter, then we will do the other designation. But we'll try where we'll try at least once to get a proper um try and get a proper other world encounter that is specific to that other world. But we're not gonna keep pulling cards forever we'll uh, we'll give it two shots if it doesn't work then we'll just do other okay so that's the gate deck they've all been shuffled um location decks i've used arkham horror black goat of the woods and curse of the dark pharaoh location cards they are all shuffled together and uh, it means we've got some nice thick decks we shouldn't run into you know we shouldn't be doing encounters over and over again so that won't be a problem Primary monsters, they're in the monster bag here. Dun, 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 dun. And I've, I've followed what it says here. Um, Wolfpack 48 does it on symbol. So uh, we've got four circle monsters, 12 diamond monsters, three hex monsters, 32 moon monsters, three plus monsters, three slash monsters, 12 square monsters, a star monster, and two triangle monsters. They are all in the bag. So prime, as far as the gates go, the gates are in this red bag here. They are core gates, and they're also lurker at the threshold gates. That's why they're in a bag. Normally you put them in a stack, but uh, in you can easily tell the difference between a lurker at the threshold gate and a core uh, gate so I've put them in the bag so we won't know until we pull it out of the bag whether it's core or lurker at the threshold and uh, exactly like it's put here in the um, in the scenario what we've got is another dimension times four another time times four the plateau of length times four other gates I put I picked out at random times eight they've gone in great hall of Celiano is another time so on the board, on the other world list, um, we are substituting the Great Hall of Celiano for another time. So uh, it's about halfway up the board. 
about there. That's, that would normally be the Great Hall of uh, Celiano or the world. It's now another time. The difference being is the Great Hall of Celiano, I think, is a blue and green gate. And uh, another time is actually a red and green gate. So uh, I'll bear that in mind when we actually come to uh, do any another time um, encounters in the other world. But that's something to bear in mind. If we get any location cards or encounter cards that mention the Great Hall of Celiano, we will substitute another time. If, for whatever reason, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to do that substitution, then we'll just pick another card and we will carry on. But I think most of the time we'll just be able to substitute another time and uh, we'll be fine. So that's not a problem. And uh, what else are we doing? Let me have a look. We are... Oh yes. We've uh, got the Ancient Whispers um, marker. That's at the Miskatonic University Streets, just up there. So uh, that's out and about. We've also done... Well, I've got the... Oh yeah, as regards the small cards. So we've got the Exhibit Item cards. We've got the Exhibit Encounter cards. We've got um, the One of a Thousand memberships. The cult encounters and the corruption cards they are all in they are all in there we have got the um injury and madness cards from dunwich horror they always go in we've got the benefits and detriments i've put those in as well from um i think they're from curse of the dark feral but they might be from the black goat of the woods whichever one they're from they're in um, we've got our usual small cards, you know, things like the Deputy's Revolver, the Curse and Blessings, the Bank Loans, the Retainers, Silver Twilight membership as well. So that's in there along with the Cult of the Thousand membership. They are all there and they are all ready to go. Token-wise, I've also got the Patrol Markers because uh, they may come out as part of um, location encounters. So uh, the Patrol Markers that are from the Curse of the Dark Pharaoh expansion, they are also available to be used. Okay, at the Investigator Pool. As mentioned, Jenny Barnes and Hank Sampson were required. So we've got those, we'll go through those, um, we'll go through those later. We needed to pick two more. So I randomly picked Charlie Kane and Diana Stanley, which are... <laughs> immediately behind Jenny Barnes and Hank Sampson in the list on the scenario, which you hadn't noticed before. But uh, yes, those are the two we've picked. Um, the rest of the people in that investigator pool, Jacqueline Fine, Min Thai Pan, um, Monterey Jack, Leo Anderson and, and Leo Anderson. So it's not a very big pool. So if anybody snuffs it, we'll use a couple of the, we'll use another investigator out of that pool to take their place. Um, Jenny and Hank, I've got to use the best of friends relationship card. So I've pulled that out for them. I've also pulled out relationship cards for the other two and we'll go through those when we go through the investigators. The Endless Hunger. Any investigator gaining an exhibit item must gain a one of a thousand or Silver Twilight membership as well. That's player choice. So uh, if we're picking up exhibit items, then we're going to have to get that. Investigators must gain a one of a thousand or Silver Twilight membership if it is offered, even if they cannot meet the requirements. If an investigator becomes cursed, they must also gain a membership. You will see the reason for this is when we get to Rantagoth, because uh, yes, it's it's nasty. That's why they're forcing you to have these memberships. Members must choose cult encounters or inner sanctum encounters as appropriate. Investigators may lose their one of a thousand or silver twilight membership by sacrificing five clue tokens at the South Church or by gaining a blessing. Any time one or more cultists are drawn, investigators with a one of a thousand or a silver twilight membership in Arkham are devoured 
as part of Rantagoth's insatiable hunger attack. Place their marker on Rantagoth's sheet, count them cultists for purposes of the final battle, and raise Doom and Terror by one, in addition to any other Doom and Terror increases. So we could do with getting rid of any memberships. We have Diana Stanley on the team. She already has a membership of the Silver Twilight Lodge. And as part of her um, as part of her having that membership, she can't lose it. So essentially, according to her investigator sheet, she can never lose it. What I'm thinking of there is that's not very fair. You know, if she can never lose it, she's virtually guaranteed to be devoured. I don't think that's quite fair. I think that's a bit grim. So I'm going to house rule here. She can get rid of her Silver Twilight membership by gaining a blessing. But what I'm going to say is if she gains a blessing, she loses that at the same time. So she has a choice. If she keeps a blessing, she's got to keep her Silver Twilight Lodge membership. But when she gains a blessing, she can also discard that blessing at the same time as her membership. So I think that is enough of a penalty. Rather than her having to keep her Silver Twilight membership throughout the game. And, um, you know, I, I hate one, you know, just getting, oh, you're dead things, you know, straight off just by a turn of a card, hate it. You've got to have a little bit of a chance. So her chance is she's got a choice. If she gets blessed, she can decide to keep the blessing and keep her Silver Twilight Lodge membership. Or if she decides to get rid of her Silver Twilight Lodge membership, she has to get rid of the blessing at the same time. She can get a blessing later on, as soon as she gets rid, but, but she's not allowed to get the benefit of a blessing while getting rid of her Silver Lodge membership, if you see what I mean. For example, anybody else, they can have a firm, one of the cult memberships, and if they get a blessing, they'll get rid of the cult membership, but they don't have to get rid of the blessing. So it's just, um, it's just a bit more of a penalty for Diana. She shouldn't have joined the Silver Twilight Lodge in the first place. Okay, so... Uh, We've done that. Family values. In addition to five clues, Jenny and Hank must also discard one exhibit item at their respective story locations to pass their personal stories. So that's going to make it a bit more difficult for them. Um, because they're going to have to pick up an exhibit item as well as the five clues, then that means they're also going to get a cult membership, whether that's Silver Twilight or Cult of the Thousand, which leaves them open to getting devoured should a cultist come out so um there we go that's just um in with the scenario that's fine we'll just have to um hopefully complete their personal stories and then get them blessed or they'll have another five clues <laughs> with which to get rid of their cult membership before they get devoured so uh, just makes it a little bit more difficult for Hank or Jenny to complete their personal story. Um, but if they do pass, if they do manage to pass the personal stories, we can take two Doom off the Doom track. So that is fair, you know. It's a bit more difficult for them to do their personal stories, but if they do them, then at least they get a bit of a benefit for doing so. All right, so that's pretty much the um, scenario. Um, what we'll go through next is we'll go through uh, the Ancient One and the Herald. So I'll take these. Now, you should come up on the screen now so uh, you can read through with me. First of all, we'll do uh, Ran Tagoth. I always want to say Rent a Ghost. I don't know why. It's probably because I'm British. Uh, there's only British people who'll get that. But, <laughs> but uh, Ran Tagoth, he's an ugly looking mother, isn't he? Now, um, now Rantagoth comes from a short story, um, The Horror at the Museum, which was written by Lovecraft, although it doesn't have his name on it, or it didn't originally have his name on it. He ghost wrote it for somebody. Um, a, a woman, I think, gave him 
sort of a very, very vague outline for a, a story about a horror in the museum, and he basically wrote it all um, on her behalf. So it is his story. It's a very good story. It's well worth uh, reading. I do recommend it. All right, but anyway, back to Ran to Goth. His uh, combat modifier is minus four, but hopefully it won't get that far. As far as worshippers, Rantagoth is worshipped by the twisted creatures of the tundra. Nop K gain nightmarish one, so we'll have to remember that if we pull them out of the monster bag. Start of battle, Rantagoth gains two extra doom tokens for each cultist on this sheet. So cultists on this sheet, dead investigators that are on this sheet, um, Pa or Isabel, if they're on this sheet. They will get two extra doom tokens. But hopefully it won't get to the final battle because I hate doing final battles. The fine, you know, doing them normally. If you're just playing the game off camera, on camera, final battles are a real pain. So hopefully it won't get that far. Rantagoth, the insatiable hunger. While Rantagoth stirs in his slumber, any cultist that is drawn from the monster cup is placed on this sheet. The terror level then increases by one, a doom token is added to the doom track, and a replacement monster is drawn. Uh, we won't go through the attack, that's all to do with the final battle. I'll go if we do go to a final battle, I'll go through it. Uh, the, Main thing to notice there is he is physically immune, so we'd need magic weapons to tech him on. Um, as far as his uh, Doom Track goes, it's 11. So it's not the longest Doom Track in the world, so uh, we're going to be up against it, aren't we? So let's move from Rantagoth and on to the Herald. I hate Heralds. They are... <laughs> Bloody horrible things. And the Dark Pharaoh is one of the worst. So here he is, the Dark Pharaoh. He's an avatar of Nile Arthotep. He's one of his masks. When the Dark Pharaoh is the Herald, place the Dark Pharaoh monster token in the monster cup at the start of the game, even if Nile Arthotep is not the ancient one. I have done that. Nile Arthotep isn't the ancient one, but we have to put his mask monster, the Dark Pharaoh mask monster, into the cup. It is in there. None of the other mass monsters are in the cup. Why? Because Nile Arthotep isn't the ancient one. So it's just the dark pharaoh mass monster that is in there. The pharaoh's curse. Know, O oh thief, that these things are mine. For I am the dark pharaoh. Him of the crawling chaos. Take what is mine and your blood will boil in your skin. As I reveal to you my other faces... And my true glory. <laughs> so the Pharaoh's curse has come to Arkham. Following the Egyptian exhibit. That is currently visiting the Arkham Museum of History. The effects of the Pharaoh's curse are described below. No O Thief. Each time an investigator gains a unique item, including starting equipment, that investigator loses one sanity. That means that two of our investigators have already lost sanity because they start with unique items. So that's a laugh. These things are mine. Each time an investigator gains an exhibit item, roll a die. On a failure, that investigator is cursed. So we're going to have to do really well on that because once you start getting cursed, it's bad enough in any game of Arkham Horror 2nd Edition. In this particular scenario, scenario, getting cursed is really grim. So we'll have to look out for that. Blood will boil. At the start of the upkeep phase, before rolling to get rid of curses, each cursed investigator loses one stamina. There you go. Get cursed, you've got a chance of losing stamina as well. Oh, bad. My other faces. This doesn't really apply, but I'll read it anyway. All mass monsters gain one toughness. In addition, each time a mass monster is defeated, add one doom token to the Ancient One's doom trap. That only applies for the Dark Pharaoh mass monster that we've got. So we've got to remember he's got an additional toughness. And that, uh, what is it? Yeah, we'll... If we do defeat him, we've got to add an extra uh, Doom token on the track. My true glory doesn't affect us whatsoever because Nile Arthotep isn't the ancient one, so we can ignore that. Okay, so that's the Dark Pharaoh and Ran to Goth talked about. 
and uh, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, one thing to talk about. We have the allies. Now, there are 11 allies in the core set, and there are seven Curse of the Dark Pharaoh allies. So that makes 18. Obviously, we only need 11. So I just shuffled them together, took 11 out. So they're all there. I won't go through them yet. I will go through them when we get to the investigators in a moment because Charlie Kane needs an ally. So uh, once we pick his ally, I'll go through the full set of them and see who we have. So that'll be interesting to find out, won't it? I don't think there's anything else to go through. I think I've mentioned everything. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just put these away and then we'll have a look at our first investigator. So I won't be a moment. And here we are with Charlie Kane. This is in no particular order. I've just picked him first because we've got to get him an ally. Now, as far as his skills, the common items and all the rest of it, those have been um, randomly chosen already. The reason for that is I use Tibbs's starting possessions which uh, it basically means, you know, you don't get, like, Sister Mary with a Tommy gun to start with. She could pick up a Tommy gun later, but she doesn't start with one. So uh, they're just thematic starting possessions. Don't do it on camera, because you've got to do a lot of cross-referencing and, like, oh, right, is he allowed this? Isn't he allowed this? All that sort of... And it just takes too long. So they've already been randomly cho chosen and vetted against the, uh, the list. And... Uh, these are all allowed for him, so I'll go through those in um, a little. I'll go through those right now. Uh, Charlie Kane, his uh, he is the politician. He has four sanity and six stamina. He has um, he starts at the administration building. Uh, his fixed possessions these change on the starting possessions. No, he, on here it'll say nine dollars but he only actually gets seven. So that's why there's only seven dollars there. I think they took, took a couple of dollars off him because of his personal story, I think, um, where he has to get $15, but uh, I'll go through that in, in a while. They want to make it a bit more difficult for him. So he's only actually starting with nine dollars. For his random possessions, he'll have two common items, one ally and one skill. So I'll go through those in a moment. Uh, let's just go through the rest of the card here. Uh, it's uh, special abilities. One is connections. Any phase, Charlie may gain allies that have been returned to the box. Those are just allies out of the 11 here. He can't pick anybody, um, any ally in the game. It's just these ones here. So, as uh, you know, if some of them flee town and end up in... Uh, end up pushing the terror track up normally they go all the way back to the box and we wouldn't see them again but charlie he can bring them back from the box so that's what connections means settle down any phase charlie may pay two clue tokens to prevent the terror level from increasing by one he may do this as often as he likes. Yes, Arkham Horror Designers, they love you to spend clues, especially when spending those clues means you're not sealing a gate. <laughs> um, this is a very clue-heavy scenario because you've got to spend clues to get rid of like cult memberships. You've got to spend clues to do this, that and the other. So, you know, it makes it really difficult to uh, generate enough clues in order to actually seal gates, which is the name of the game, really. We've got to seal those those gates, those six gates, in order to win. So uh, we're going to have to be very, very canny on uh, what we use clues for. So we probably won't be using Settle Down, but we'll see. Um, it is very useful because it does keep the terror track in in you know in some sort of like order you can keep it under control so we'll just have to keep an eye on it okay um his focus is two and uh, as far as his um 
don't take too much notice of these i've just put them in there um when we actually start the game in the next episode they they could be changed but um at the present let's have a look at his skills his speed is between zero and three not too good he's a bit of a slow coach sneaks not too bad he can go between one and four fight is two to five so he's quite handy uh, and his wills one to four which is pretty good as well law one to four okay and look one to four they're okay they're pretty standard um he's set up for two two speed and sneak um fight and will three three and law and look is three and two that could change and there are a couple of things that he's got that actually uh, give him bonuses on that but uh, i'll go through those quickly now so what did he have he had two common items and the ones that have picked are here as i mentioned i'll just read through them then i'll put them in front of the camera and uh, you can pause the video if you want to read them yourself but first of all i'll go through fine clothing plus one to all skill checks during arkham encounters so this is excellent you can also see why this is thematic starting possession he is a politician so he's going to have a fancy tux uh, we've got however if we take any damage whatsoever, any stamina damage, we've got to discard fine, fine clothing. So if he gets beaten up or he gets shot or something like that, stabbed, then uh, obviously it's going to ruin his fine tuxedo. So we have to discard it. So uh, that costs $5. And anybody who wants to read it for themselves, there it is. So that's his fine clothing. His second common item is a safety deposit key. Movement. Spend one movement point and discard this card while in the bank of Arkham to make a luck minus two check. If you succeed, draw one unique item. If you fail, gain two clue tokens. This costs $2. Now this is one where I'd probably want to fail that and get the two clue tokens because if you actually get a unique item, it's gonna cost him a sanity because of the herald so there it is there you go right so that's the two common items and then we need an ally so here they are the 11 allies crappy shuffle do that let's see who he gets and he gets he gets ryan dean so let's have a read of him Ally, Ryan Dean. Oh, he looks a bit like shady, but then again, Charles is a politician, isn't he? So get plus one will and plus one sneak. Excellent. So he's pretty good, Ryan Dean, for all he's obviously a bit of a spiv. And uh, you draw one common item when Ryan Dean joins you. So we're going to have to get an extra common item. However, that is Ryan Dean. So, pop him down there. Now I'm going to have to pull out the bloody... Ugh. Right. As far as common items, unique items, spells and skills and everything, um, every card in the game is in here. Yeah, so every common item you can get in the game is in here. I've just mixed them all together. Doesn't make too much difference. Saves messing around. So uh, we'll just do a cut. These have already been shuffled. We'll do a cut and we'll see what the common item is. It is, ooh, a 0.357 Magnum. Just the sort of thing for Charlie to have in his tux. So let's have a look at this. 0.357 Magnum, physical weapon, any phase. Exhaust to gain plus five to combat checks until the end of this combat. This is really good, actually. In the upkeep phase, a 0.357 Magnum does not refresh unless you spend a dollar. So, uh, but that's all right. Charlie's got, he's got seven dollars. Sorry, not nine, seven. So he's got plenty of money. So there you go. If anybody wants to read. Fantastic. So we've got a Magnum. Just before I carry on with Charlie, let's have a look at uh, who I picked out, because I don't know either. 
So I'll very quickly go through these. Anna Caslow. Erica Carlisle. Got quite a few Curse of the Dark Pharaoh ones. The Messenger. Yes, a Billy Brinton. Do you want an arm wrestle? Professor Armitage. John Lagrasse. Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. Standish. Quite thematic. I think you get her in the Silver Twilight Lodge, so that's that's quite thematic for this playthrough. David Packard, another Curse of the Dark Pharaoh. Bod. Father Iwaniki. So we've got quite a few Curse of the Dark Pharaoh allies. Tommy Malone. He's a good one. He's very good. And we're back to Anna. So those are the remaining 10. All pretty good. So we'll pop those over here. And we'll keep, keep them there. Alrighty. Super. So those are our allies. Let's carry on with Charlie. So he's got a skill. And the skill that uh, was randomly picked for him was Will. So he gets plus one Will. When you spend a clue token to add to any will check, add one extra bonus die. So his will is pretty good. Now we've got, um, what's his name? Ryan Dean as well. He gets basically plus two will. So got him on three there. He's essentially on five at the moment. So that's pretty good, Charlie. Pretty good. I'm impressed. Um, he also has his personal story. So let's read that. And... Was it over? Right, so this is his personal story. I'll read that and then you can have a look at it. Charlie Kane, it's a nightmare. He'd seen it before, faced it and lived to tell the tale, but he didn't have to like it. The awful slumbering of a dead god is one thing, but this, on top of it all? Please, Bonnie, say it ain't so. Didn't we just do this? Bonnie left his coffee and walked off with a shrug. Another election. Now, of all times. So Charlie is up for re-election. And uh, let's have a look at the conditions, the pass-fail conditions. Charlie Kane, re-election. Pass. If Charlie is at the newspaper during the upkeep phase, he may spend $15 to place Kane for Arkham in play. Fail. If the terror level reaches four or higher, place dark times ahead in play. So that's probably why he's, out, he's been knocked down to $7. But uh, we do have Jenny Barnes on the team, so I think he's going to manage this. And uh, he's going to uh, manage to get his re-election uh, advertisement into the Arkham Advertiser. So, uh, so there we are. Anybody who wants a look. And there, the pass and the fail. If you want to look at that. And uh, we'll read the actual cards themselves, should he pass or fail. When he passes or he fails. So there we are, that's Charlie's personal story. And uh, the final card that we have to go through is his relationship card. Now, uh, this relationship card is with um, Diana Stanley. Not Diana Stanley, what am I talking about? This relationship card is with Hank Samson. And they are both skullcrackers. Either you or Hank may exhaust this card before making a combat check to gain plus one to the check. So that's pretty good for both Charlie and Hank. So they're skullcrackers. And that is that. What we've got to do now is... Uh, We'll find out what the story so far is, and that's on the back of here. So I'll read that out. Um, I won't bother turning it over because I've put it in here, but I'll read it out for you. Charlie Kane promised the people of Arkham a safer future. 
He made a lot of promises. Lower taxes, better schools, less crime. It was part of the job after all. He said what he had to say to get elected. And then he set about doing what he could to help people. Although he had to do things he wasn't proud of, Charlie always worked for the greater good. The people came first. Good on you, Charlie. So when Charlie Kane started hearing the reports, he put the people first. Of course, he couldn't tell anyone, couldn't reveal what he had pieced together. Reports from various parts of the city government that painted a macabre portrait of Arkham's future. For one, who would believe him? For another, how would widespread panic serve the public good? Still, Charlie has always had connections in town. So he gathered up his reports and paid a visit to Professor Grant at Miskatonic University. The fact that he now stands before Professor Grant's mutilated corpse in his blood-stained office does not fill Charlie Kane with confidence. So there we go. That is his story so far. That is Charlie Kane. So uh, he's ready to rock and roll. Okay, I'll go and pick somebody else and we'll go through our next investigator. And the next investigator we're going to go through is Hank Sampson, a requirement for the scenario. So here's Hank. He is the farmhand. He has five sanity and six stamina normally, but he's only starting with four sanity. Why? Because he has a unique item and because of the Herald, he loses a sanity. So he's only starting with four sanity, but normally he'd start with five. Um, he starts at the general store. His fixed possessions are $3 and normally he'd get a clue token as well. But because of the thematic starting possessions, he doesn't get that clue token. So uh, no clue token for Hank. He gets one common item, food, so I've picked that out. And uh, with the thematic starting possessions, I also uh, randomly chose his two common items, a unique item and a skill. I'll go through those shortly. Special ability is he is thick skulled. Uh, any phase, Hank does not make a horror check when he first encounters a monster. Instead, he only makes a horror check if he first fails a combat or evade check against a monster. That makes him a very strong monster puncher. So, uh, good on him. And uh, hopefully, he won't fail any fight checks. All right, let's go through his cards. So, first I'll do his skill first. So his skill, I was very impressed, very impressed and very happy to pick this one out. So I got grapple, so excellent. And it's just the sort of thing for Hank. Uh, when you make any fight check, add plus one to each die you roll for purposes of checking for successes. So if you roll a three, it'll be counted as a four. If you roll a four, it'll be counted as a five. This is brilliant for Hank because it means, as far as fighting goes, he's essentially blessed. Because uh, any four he rolls will become a five. So uh, this is just brilliant, and he can't lose it, because it isn't a blessing. He's just good at grappling. But look at the size of him. So anybody who wants to read that, there you go. There's his grapple skill. Just the job. Very impressed with that. Let's uh, see his common items that uh, came out. First one is food. Now he gets this automatically. And uh, any phase, discard food to reduce any stamina loss by one. So uh, this costs a dollar. Pretty bog standard. Not much cop, but uh, he is a fighting character, so he'll possibly come in. So that's food there. And uh, the two that came out of his thematic starting possessions that I picked out, first of all, I picked out for him a lucky rabbit's foot. So any phase, exhaust to gain plus one to a luck check. So that's really good. Uh, in Arkham Encounters, after you draw an encounter card, exhaust and discard lucky rabbit's foot to draw a different encounter card. So there you go. 
it's a discard. Um, don't like discards. We've got a few of them, to be honest. Food was a discard. And um, all the investigators have got a couple of them. I seem to have picked quite a few. But the good thing about the Lucky Rabbit's Foot is it's situational when you discard it. And it has got, um, because of his plus one to the luck check, that works all the time. So, as so long as we don't discard it, then we'll always have that plus one to the luck check. So, it's not too bad, Lucky Rabbit's Foot. So, uh, there you go. Anybody who wants to have a look and a read, $4, that one. And it's a Black Goat of the Woods one as well, I've just noticed. So, there we go, Lucky Rabbit's Foot. Just the sort of thing that Hank would have in his pocket. Uh, the final common item that um, he got was a shotgun which uh, thank god for that we needed a decent weapon considering he's going to be doing mo most of the uh, monster killing so shotgun physical weapon plus four to combat checks any phase when using shotgun in combat all sixes rolled count as two successes brilliant it's two-handed weapon obviously and uh, normally would cost six dollars so let's have a look at his shotgun anybody who wants to see there's his shotgun pause the video if you want to read them okay so uh, that's his common items let's have a look at his unique item that's cost him a sanity and i'll be honest i wouldn't have paid a sanity for it so <laughs> Not my best pick. Um, he's got the Elder Sign Pendant. Mythos phase. Discard to prevent a monster surge. Instead, one monster, or two if there are five or more players, so one monster for us, there's only four investigators, appears at the gate indicated on the Mythos card. So, not very good at all. You know, just stopping a monster surge. It'd have been better if we didn't have to discard it. But, it's an yet another one and done so as soon as we use it for that purpose we discard it i'd much preferred an elder sign but no such luck so we've just got the pendant you never know it may come in useful and having done that what we on next ah yes we're on to his personal story so uh, hank sampson Hank was alone in a strange city and Pa was missing. Well, that was okay. He'd just go back to the train station and look for Pa. If Pa wasn't there, well, he'd worry about that later. So, there we are. There's Hank. And pass and fail conditions. Hank Sampson, where's Pa? Pass. Hank may spend five clue tokens while at the train station during the upkeep phase to place theirs part in play. But remember the scenario rules, he's also got to get rid of an exhibit item as well in order to pass that. The fail condition, if Hank fails a horror check, place the boy who learned to fear in play. So we don't want to fail any horror checks. Remember, he doesn't have to do a horror check unless he fails a fight or combat check. So, uh, hopefully, he won't fail any. And if he does, hopefully he'll pass his horror check. <laughs> so, uh, we'll go through the actual pass and fails and what bonuses and detriments you get when it comes to the time. So, uh, but, there we go. There's the pass and fails for you to have a look at. Okay, finally, we have his relationship card. He's already a skull cracker with Charlie, and this is his relationship card, as um, as has been mandatory for this scenario, he has to be the best of friends with Jenny Barnes, quite where he met Jenny Barnes, you know, he's a farmhand in the middle of nowhere, she's a globe-trotting debutante, so quite how that has happened, I don't know, I suppose they met on the train coming to Arkham, she was coming to Arkham to investigate Isabel. He's coming to Arkham um, with his pa. So they may have met on the train. Quite how they become the best of friends, I don't know. But they are. So there we go. Let's go. Let's read it before I show it you. The best of friends, if you and your partner are in the same neighbourhood 
Either of you may exhaust this card before making a check to gain plus one on that check. If the Ancient One has awakened, this card may not be used. So it's a good one, this. But you've got to be in the same neighbourhood. A neighbourhood is um, a set of locations of the same colour. Okay, so there you go. There it is, if you want to read it. And pop that down there. Okay, all we've got to do is go through his story so far. The story so far. As he was growing up on his parents' farm, it soon became obvious that Hank was more of a doer than a thinker. He wasn't stupid exactly, he just didn't spend a lot of time thinking things through before he did them. A lot of the time this tended to get him in trouble. Then again, sometimes it came in handy, like it had in the last month when he heard the cows panicking. Picking up his shotgun, way the shotgun, Hank rushed outside only to see some kind of giant buzzard thing attacking the cattle. Now some might have questioned their own sanity at the sight, while others might have fainted away in sheer horror. But Hank, he just took aim and blew the darn thing's head off. It only occurred to him later to wonder just what it had been. When Pa saw the corpse, he told Hank that they were going to take it to a professor he knew at Miskatonic University. Probably poor old Professor Grant. But uh, so they crated it up, drove to the nearest train station and hopped on a train to Arkham. Only things haven't gone so well since then. First the crate vanished off the train and then Pa went missing when he went to complain about the missing crate. As Hank grows tired of waiting at the general store where his Pa had told him to meet up if they got separated, he wonders if they might not have to start if he might not have to start doing a little thinking after all. So Hank Sampson looking for his dad. Looking for his dad, but he's still got his shotgun. And that's very important for us. <laughs> OK, that's Hank. Next up, we'll get Jenny next. We've been chatting about Jenny, so we'll get Jenny next and have a look at her. And here we are with Jenny. OK, let's go through her card. Jenny Barnes is the dilettante. She's got six sanity and four stamina, except she hasn't. Yes, she's lost a sanity because she also has a unique item because of the Herald. But other than that, nothing's changed. No thematic starting items changes. Um, she's the same as the card. So uh, she starts at the train station. Her fixed possessions are $10. So... Charlie Kane will be very interested in meeting Jenny Barnes in order to get her to bankroll his advertising campaign, probably, and pass his personal story. As far as random possessions go, she's got two common items, one unique item, one spell and one skill. Uh, her special ability is a trust fund, so every upkeep phase she gains a dollar. Because she's rich, rich, rich! Um... She's the sort of financial powerhouse in Arkham Horror 2nd Edition. Charlie Kane, financial powerhouse in Eldritch Horror, but not in this game. In this game, Charlie is not as powerful as he is in Eldritch. All right, so Jenny Barnes. Well, she's got a focus of one. Uh, as far as the skills go, she's another slow coach. I don't think I did this for Hank, did I? But... Um, Hank's quite fast. In fact, he's the only person that is fast. And uh, as you can imagine with Hank, it's his um, speed, fight. Those are the things that are pretty good for Hank. His, um, his like, law and spellcasting ability, stuff like that, isn't so clever. But um, he's, he's not too bad. At least he's fast. But Jenny, slow coach. Her sneak's okay, one to four. Fight and will. Uh, one to four on her fight, which is good. Her will's very good, though. Two to five, that's excellent. Her law and luck looks fine, one to four. But, uh, sorry, law's fine, one to four. Her luck is very good at two to five. So she's lucky and uh, she's uh, very willful. Good for her. Brilliant. So, um, right, let's go through what we picked for her. First of all, we'll do the skill. And she picked luck, so she is lucky. So she gets plus one luck when you spend a clue token. To add to any luck check, add one extra bonus die. Brilliant. 
Uh, as far as her common items, she picked two. And again, she got <laughs> she got lucky to get a lucky cigarette case. Except it isn't that lucky. Well, as you'll see when I read it, any phase, discard lucky cigarette case to re-roll any one skill check. So you can do a re-roll, which is fantastic, except as soon as you do it, you've got to discard it. So not too clever, really. Um, but it's better than a slap across the belly with a wet kipper. So that costs a dollar. So that's a lucky cigarette case. I got a lot, uh, I did a lot better with the next pick uh, because she got the 0.45 automatic physical weapon plus four combat checks, one hand and costs five dollars normally. But uh, she managed to pick it from her starting possessions so there we go that's the 0.45 automatic so she can protect herself she can doubly protect herself because for a unique item unlike hank she picked a decent one and uh, she got the enchanted knife which is here if you want a quick read of that i'll just go through it enchanted knife magical weapon plus three to combat checks. This is also one-handed, so she can have this in one hand and her 45 in the other, which is pretty good. Uh, cost $5 normally, but she's got it for free because she got it as a starting possession. That is worth a sanity. So that's what cost her a sanity with the Dark Pharaoh, but it is worth it. Uh, she's also got a spell. She got an excellent spell, but unfortunately it's another discard. But... Uh, yeah, the spell she got was Bless. So, excellent card. Casting modifier, minus one. Sanity cost is two, a bit steep, but um, it is a pretty good spell. Magical spell, upkeep. You may cast and discard to choose one investigator, even yourself. That investigator is blessed. So, it's an excellent card, an excellent spell, but you have to discard it, which is highly annoying. And it's one of about the 15 cards that are discards uh, that have picked out. So uh, not my finest hour as regards discards, but never mind. Um, hopefully we can use that to bless um, Diana. That's my proto plan. We're going to bless Diana. As I mentioned, uh, she'll have to discard that blessing in order to also discard her Silver Twilight membership, but uh, I think that's the only way we're going to be able to get rid of it uh, with that little house rule that I'm going to have. Um, as regards her personal story, let's read it. Oh, this is quite a long one, actually. Jenny Barnes. She was just off the train here in Arkham, and already Jenny hated this town. Of course, she'd had a few weeks on the trip from Paris to build the hate and fear. In truth, Arkham doesn't seem as bad in person as it did in her imagination. The gabled roofs and New England architecture were fairly charming, and the people didn't seem too horrid until she started asking questions, that is. So if you want a quick read of that, that's a personal story there. We'll see what the uh, pass and fail conditions are. Jenny Barnes, Isabel, pass. If Jenny is at the Unvisited Isle, oh, one of the worst locations in the game, during the upkeep phase, she may spend five clue tokens to place Reunited in play. Remember, her personal story, as well as Hank, she has to add, add, add an ex exhibition item to that. Yeah, so makes it a little bit more difficult. The fail condition, if the terror level reaches three or higher, place too late in play. Again, another um, personal story condition that depends on the terror track. Fortunately, we've got a bit of control over the terror track with Charlie, but I prefer him not to be spending like clues to keep the ter terror track in check. Um, I'd much prefer both Jenny and Charlie and Hank to be actually killing the monsters. And hopefully that's what they'll do. So uh, that's Jenny's personal story. Next, we'll have a look at her relationship card. She's best of friends with Hank. So we already know that. 
Her other relationship card is with Diana Stanley, and uh, that is Courageous Inspirations. Either Jenny or Diana may exhaust this card before making a horror check to gain plus one to that check, so good card. They're all pretty good, the relationship cards. So if you want a read of that. There you are. Fantastic. And we'll go through her story so far. The story so far. Several months ago, Jenny was visiting Paris when she received a letter from her sister, Isabel. In it, Isabel rambled incoherently, writing about men in dark cloaks following her wherever she went, and of hoof prints in the woods, left by an enormous goat. The outside of the envelope was partially stained with blood, and it was mailed from Arkham. That was the last letter from Isabel she received. Jenny has since returned to the States, coming to Arkham to find her missing sister. Stepping off the train from Boston into the dark autumn night, she believes that her sister was abducted by a strange cult and is determined to find her and thwart the plans of those that took her, even if she has to save all of Arkham in the process. Fantastic. Jenny, one of my favourite investigators. She's a star. So uh, looking forward to playing Jenny as always. Okay, that leaves us just one investigator to go through. So I better go get her, hadn't I? And here we are with our final starting investigator, Diana Stanley, the reform, reform, redeemed cultist. But she's not redeemed yet. She's still a cultist. And uh, she's got four sanity and six stamina. She doesn't lose anything at all. She hasn't got any unique items. And uh, the thematic starting possessions didn't take anything off her. So she is as written. Um, she starts at the general store with Hank. So her and Hank are already rubbing shoulders. Good news if we want to trade. So I'll have to look into that for the first turn. Her fixed possessions, she's got $4.00. Two clue tokens. Hooray! Somebody's got some clues and they haven't been taken off them. Uh, one special, a Silver Twilight Lodge membership. We'll go through that in a minute. Random possessions, a common item, a spell and a skill. Her abilities, uh, trusted sister, any phase, you cannot lose your Silver Lodge membership. Okay. Normally she wouldn't be able to lose it as I mentioned before. She is going to be able to lose it in this scenario because of the special circumstances. But if she wants to lose it, she has to get blessed and she has to lose the blessing as well. This is just so she doesn't get, you know, like just devoured. Because I don't think it's fair you just get devoured. Yeah, um, you've got to have some way of getting away with it. And uh, the penalty for that is going to be she actually has to lose a blessing. So uh, if she gets one, that is. Uh, dark Insight, any phase, gain one sanity or one stamina each time a Doom token is added to the Ancient One's Doom track. That's brilliant, apart from the fact the Doom track goes up. But uh, if she ever loses any sanity or stamina, she can get that back with the once the Doom track goes up. So I'll have to remember that. That is one of the things that I will forget probably. Um, as it is, she's at full sanity and full stamina at the moment. So um, that means that uh, first, right at the end of this um, episode, I'm going to pull the first Mythos card. So uh, even though we'll probably end up with a Doom token, she's obviously not going to get that benefit because uh, she's at full health and full sanity. Uh, but later on in the game, I dare say it'll come in handy. Um, in addition, gain one clue token each time the terror track rises. Now, ugh, I prefer definitely not to get that. The reason being is it, it just... Um, it's tied into so many people's pass and fail conditions on their personal story. So I'm really going to try and keep the terror level down. But we could do with the clues, but we don't need the terror level going up. But all the same, quite a good uh, ability. Um, she's got a focus of one. As regards her speed, she's another slow coach. It's zero to three. We've only got one person who can actually 
seem to walk fast, and that's Hank. Uh, Sneak's okay at 1 to 4. Fight's okay, 1 to 4. Will's okay, 1 to 4. Law is uh, excellent, 3 to 6. So we could do with her casting a few spells. Definitely. Uh, Luck is um, okay at 1 to 4. Um, the things I've set there, as I mentioned, these are just, I've just plonked these here. It may change when we come to the upkeep phase of our first turn. So uh, don't count on those being there when we start the next episode. Okay, let's go through her possessions then. And uh, she's done pretty well. I don't know why I don't just pick these up all at the same time and then just go through them. Duh. But done it now. So first thing we'll go through is her skill. And excellent. An excellent pick by me. And uh, what we got was plus one law. When you spend a clue token to add to any law check, add one extra bonus die. So just the thing for her. This is a very good, a very good random pick by me. Brilliant. I, I'm brilliant. Fantastic. Okay, not so good. The Silver Twilight Lodge membership that she comes with. So here it is. And uh, just you've seen this millions of times before. Uh, it just means when you're in the Silver Twilight Lodge and you have an encounter, you have it in the Inner Sanctum instead. So there you go. That's that. But it has, you know, extra connotations in this scenario because if we're caught with one, when a cultist comes out, we get devoured. So I've already gone through a couple of times how she can get rid of that. But uh, normally she'd have to keep it. Okay, uh, a common item, she's got a dark cloak. Just the thing for an aspiring cultist. The thematic starting possessions, they strike again. So she's got a dark cloak, plus one to evade checks. Normally costs $2, but she's got it to start with. So there you go, if you want to read that, that's what it looks like. There we are. Her spell... She picked a good spell as well. I was finally getting into the swing of it with Diana. And she got Find Gate. Casting modifier minus one. Sanity cost is one. Magical spell. Movement phase. Cast an exhaust to immediately return to Arkham from another world. So it looks like Diana's going to be our gate closer. So uh, good spell. And you don't have to discard it either. Which makes a nice change. So that's find gate. Right, move on to her personal story. Diana Stanley. Diana knew that the lodge had eyes everywhere. She walked casually through Arkham streets towards the police station. She was certain the evidence she had would see that Carl Sanford was locked away as a madman for the rest of his life. She just hoped that whomever she spoke to at the station wasn't one of the lodge's minions. Go, go. And, uh, yeah, her pass and fail conditions, uh, redemption, pass. If Diana is at the police station during the upkeep phase, she may spend five clue tokens to place the mole in play. Fail, if the terror level reaches four, again, another terror level personal story, fail. Ugh. So we're going to have to really keep an eye on that. We're going to have to kill monsters like now, right? Uh, if it reaches four, then we place laying low in play. So that's the front. And this is the back. Okay. At least we don't have to put like an extra exhibit or anything like that. Um with it it's just a, a normal personal story no scenario were uh, extras on that one and she has a, a relationship card this is a relationship card with um charlie charlie kane and uh, both her and charlie are survivors either you or your partner may exhaust this card before making an evade check to gain plus one to the check so she's quite sneaky as well with the dark cloak this 
groovy and she's also got um courageous inspirations hasn't she with jenny barnes so good stuff good stuff all right so all there is to do is to go through her story so far so i'll do that the story so far Diana Stanley moved to Arkham two years ago as the owner of a small women's clothing shop. Now, I don't know whether <laughs> it's the clothing shop that's small or she just does small women's clothing. But uh, anyway, she's opened a shop. She wanted to fit into the community as quickly as possible. Therefore, she joined the Chamber of Commerce, the Women's League and the Historical Society. Her efforts were clearly paying off since business was booming and just a few months ago, Carl Sam Samford invited her to join a very elite club in Arkham, the Silver Twilight Lodge. Her initial joy at the invitation has since turned to horror. The weekly meetings have been growing ever more disturbing since she advanced to the second rank of the Order, and her sleep has become haunted by nightmarish beings. Last week she actually witnessed the summoning of a dark creature and learned that an evil plot to summon what Samford refers to as an ancient one was in motion. It was at that moment that Diana decided not only to get away from the Order but also to stop them. She is aware that when the Order finds out what she's doing they'll come for her but she sees this as her only chance for redemption whatever the cost. So there we are. That is her personal story. Good old Diana Stanley. Groovy. In fact, she's probably got to keep her, thinking about it now, she's probably got to keep her Silver Twilight membership. So what I'm going to rule, I'm going to slightly change that house rule that I've mentioned. In that she keeps it. But if she's got a blessing at the same time as she's got the Silver Twilight Lodge membership, she gets to roll. She gets to roll whether she gets devoured or not. She gets to roll a blessed die. If, uh, and if she passes, she doesn't get devoured by Rantagoth. You know, if a cultist comes out, I'll do it that way. That way she keeps the actual Silver Twilight Lodge membership. But she does have a chance. She does have a chance to actually avoid being eaten um, should a cultist come out. I'll do it that way. That way she actually keeps the Silver Lodge membership, but she does have a chance of escaping the getting devoured part. If she's not blessed, then she gets devoured. Tough. Yeah. Um, she gets no roll. She has to be blessed in order to get a roll. So we'll do it that way just to give her a little chance of um, being able to survive that. I think that's fair. That's what I'm doing anyway. <laughs> but I think it's fair. Right, so that's it for Diana. And uh, that is it pretty much for this particular introduction and setup. All that's left is we've got to do a bit of laugh and chuckling. I'll do that in a moment. Okay, are we ready for some laugh and chuckles? Alright, we've got to draw a Mythos card. So here is our Mythos deck, all shuffled. And let's see what we get. So I'll read it out first. And then I shall show it you and you can have a good look and a read yourself. We've got a headline, Horror at Groundbreaking. So we get a gate at the Historical Society. So that's down there. Gate at the Historical Society. No, that's the woods. That's the Historical Society. And um, that clue gets sucked up, but it will get transferred to the Silver Twilight Lodge. How thematic's that? So the Silver Twilight Lodge is going to have two clues. Um, we're obviously going to have to pick a gate and a monster. The monster movement is on Crescents and for white and on the black it is plus monsters. And uh, the headline is an ancient stone is disturbed by construction, releasing two monsters into the Miskatonic University streets. Damn it! So uh, if we want an exhibit, there's going to be two monsters with it. Damn it! Could have done without that. Okay, so anyway, I'll just show you this. There you are. 
If I can get a screenshot of that, I will, because it's a Mythos card. But uh, as it stands, there we go. First thing though, Doom! So, little Doom token on there, little mini Cthulhu. So we've got our first Doom token. Now, Diana Stanley would normally get one stamina and one sanity. She won't, because uh, she's obviously at full sanity and full health, so she won't get any of those. But uh, the reason I'm reiterating that now is hopefully I won't forget in future, he says. All right, so we've done that. We need a gate. That's the first thing. So here's the gate bag. And we shall pull one out. Will it be a core gate or will it be a lurker at the threshold gate? Let's find out. It's a core gate. Yay. And what do we get? It's the Plateau of Leng. Hopefully you can see that. Plateau of Leng. There we go. So that's going to go to the historical society, which is here, which means we kick the clue away. Plateau of Leng goes in there. And this clue goes to the Silver Twilight Lodge. So there's two clues there. Excellent. I think we'll get Diana down there if we can. And now we've done that, we need a monster. Monster, monster. This one is for the gate, because we haven't got to the headline yet. We'll do the two for the Miskatonic University streets in a moment. So here we go. And we get a crawling one. Oh, these are nasty. Nasty, nasty. So, minus one there. It's a circle monster. Switch it over. Can you read that? Physically resistant. Nasty. Before making a combat check against a crawling one, roll a die. X is equal to the result of the die roll. Oh, I hate these. Minus three on the sanity check. Bloody hell. Looks like one for you, Hank. And you can possibly lose three sanity as well. Fortunately, it's only one toughness. But on the combat, hopefully we'll roll a one. <laughs> because if we roll a six, it'll be minus six on the combat. And you can lose two stamina. So uh, this is a nasty monster. So there we go. We'll put that on. Now, he's a circle, as you can see, so the monster movement isn't going to affect him. He is going to stay there at the Historical Society. Monster movement is the moons and the plus signs. That is also not going to affect the, one, the monsters at the Miskatonic University streets. The reason is the way that you read the card. Put this here. First of all, you do the gate down in the corner, then you do the clue. Um, do the gate, pull the monsters out, yeah? Then you move the clue. Then you do the monster movement. And then you read the headline. So the monsters that are coming out in the headline are coming out after the movement part of the card. Yep. So whatever monsters we pull, they will stay in the Miskatonic University streets for the start of next episode. So let's pull them out. I hope we get to something that isn't quite as bad. So I've got one here, and let's pick another one. Let's get down to the bottom. Oh, the green one, that doesn't look good. All right, let's get behind the camera for these. Oh, one's all right. The first one I pulled out is fine, cause it is a zombie so plus one to evade it's a crescent monster it's not going to move because we actually it uh, comes out after monster movement let's flick it over and have a look and it's undead she screamed and fired again but still the thing shambled on teeth dripping as it groaned its horrible cry minus one for the horror check uh, you can lose a sanity, minus one for the combat check, you can lose two stamina, and it's one toughness. Easy peasy. We like zombies. The other one, I'm not so keen on, because the other one is 
a colour out of space. So this is plus one to get, at least it's easy to evade. It's a square monster, but it's also green. Because it's green bordered, that means it's got special movement. So we're going to have to check the back. No, oh, this is great. It's physically immune and magically immune. Brilliant. Instead of moving, roll a die. On a four to six, all investigators in Arkham lose one sanity. Oh, I hate this. It's like bloody... What's the other one that's like this? Um, oh, Cthonians. They're a pain. Right, and it's minus three on the horror check. Another one for you, Hank. Uh, you can lose four sanity. Combat check, plus zero, that's okay. Uh, and you can lose a stamina, and it's got two toughness. You're probably wondering if it's magically and physically immune. Now, can you actually kill it then? Well, um, although you can't use a physical weapon, you can't use a magical weapon, you can use your fight yeah, so your your base fight skill, um, you can use, and that's probably means he can use. That probably means Hank can use grapple as well. Yes, because it goes on the fight check. Um, I think the reasoning behind it is um, your fight um, skill. It encompasses lots of things, not just weapons. Yeah, so I'm trying desperately trying to think of an example. Um, oh, here's one. The Terminator, yeah? Remember the film, The Terminator, Arnie? And how they kill that? Well, physical weapons aren't going to do much to it. And obviously there isn't much magic knocking around in The Terminator, so they can't use that. But in the end, they manage to kill him, don't they? They put him in that sort of steel blast furnace thing and melt him. Well, that's like your fight. You know, you're using your cunning, you know, to, to kill it, you know, some other way. So... Uh, that's what your generic fight skill is. So we can't use magic weapons on it. We can't use um, physical weapons on it. But we can use our fight skill on it. I'm not too sure if you can use spells on it. I'll check that. I don't think you can. I think they come under magical. But it may be that spells aren't magical weapon Counted as magical weapons. So we might be able to use spells. I'll check that. But uh, yes. It just means it's really hard to get rid of. Basically. And that's another two of these bloody holders that we've lost. So the zombie goes to the Miskatonic University streets. Bloody thing. Right, so that's a zombie. And we have got a colour out of space as well. That's on there as well. Dun, dun, dun. So good luck if you want an exhibit. He is, uh, it seems to be. Oh, poor old Charlie Kane. Oh, I'll just show you where everyone is. Charlie Kane is in the administration building, obviously in the bloodstained office of Professor Grant. Uh, <laughs> just wait till he comes out. He's got a colour out of space and he's got a zombie to deal with. I think we'd probably end up with Charlie being our last investigator to give everybody else a chance to to uh, to like make sure he can actually leave the administration building. Otherwise he's uh, he's in a he's in a spot of bother is the lad. Um Hank and Diana, they're both at the general store, so perhaps they can trade. I'll have a look into that. And right up here is the lovely Jenny Barnes. She's at the train station. And uh, just to um, reiterate, our gate is to the Plateau of Leng. Uh, that's at the Historical Society, and it's guarded by a crawling one, which is another nasty monster. Colour out of space, zombie. Exhibition marker is here. And uh, we've got two clues at French Hill in the Silver Twilight Lodge. So we will have to, like, factor all that in for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for staying with the channel and for coming back despite the horrendously long absence. Thank you very much. If I've made any uh, mistakes in the setup, please let me know as normal and I will correct them for next time. Um, other than that, the usual spiel. 
thank you so much and uh, anybody who's like uh, gonna make a comment on the video make a comment over at BGG thanks very much um, please subscribe if you're enjoying the content don't forget to do a thumbs up if you like the content put a th thumbs down if you didn't like the content I don't care just do it the fact that uh, <laughs> you use the like or dislike button well it all goes into the algorithm so thank you very much even if you didn't like it um, other than that oh if you want to support the channel if you'd like to support the channel um, I do have a Kofi page now is it coffee or Kofi I don't know anyway um, you should see it come up somewhere probably that side of the screen um, so if you do want to tip me a coffee although I've got to admit I'll drink tea but if you want to tip me a coffee you can uh, go along to the actual um, link there and tip me a coffee you don't have to tip me anything yeah just like subscribe make a comment something like that you know if you can be bothered uh, you don't have to tip me anything but if you do god bless you Okay, right, anyway, that is the end of this introduction and setup. We are ready to rumble, folks. We are ready to rumble against Rantagoth and the bloody Dark Pharaoh as well. Sod him as well. We'll take you on. We'll take them all on. And we are going to save Arkham and the world. That's the spirit, Paul. Come on. We're going to do it, baby. Right. So, I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, saying toodaloo.